Hey YouTube, this is uh, this is me. <laughs> this is for all of you that play Minecraft. Um, I actually run a uh, small Minecraft server, and I recently switched over to a uh, a new Minecraft server project called Cauldron. And uh, the reason I did that, I I've been running Bucket for ages now, and. Uh, Bucket had some limitations. I mean, it was great that it had the plugins and stuff, but there was only so much you could do with them. And where I ran into this uh, limitation on the server was with a citizens <coughs> citizens plugin. And I started noticing it on other ones, and I didn't want to go all the way the hell over to Spout because that's a whole other ball of wax, and it's a whole other busy ball of wax that. Really, unless you're a real nut for, for nitpicking, Spout can, can really become a hassle. So, I loaded up a new server. I tried it out called Cauldron. And the reason I did, I wanted NPCs in the world that we, in the worlds that we created. Um, Minecraft worlds are very, uh, just, you know, it's just static. I mean, there's like, a little bit of animals and the NPC villagers they're really crummy they, they're not really that great they don't interact with you they don't do any real jobs and the world was just lifeless <coughs> so <clears throat> enter citizens 2 the NPC plugin so I tried it and I thought hey this thing is great you know and it was it's really cool unfortunately Citizens 2 has a limitation as it concerns custom skins. The only skins available to you in Citizens 2 are the generic Steve skin. And this is if you're not this is if you're running unmodified Minecraft client, you know. The generic Steve skin, or if you know the skin of a user that you know, you can put the username in for the name of the NPC and it'll load that user skin onto the NPC and uh, and that's good if if the user doesn't change his skin often and you know that he's got the right one that you want to use but it's bad like if you want a guard <clears throat> or you want somebody in a profession and they have to have a uniform or they have to have some custom custom uh, texture or skin, you know, for that particular thing. My thing was guards. Guards and traders and that. Oh, and the other limitation I found with it was that for Citizens 2 to operate as guards or traders or anything other than an NPC that's just standing there and looking at you and saying things... Sorry, I don't have a tripod for this thing, so I'm having to hold it in my hand. So if it jumps around, you know, that's just how it is. You have to have a sub plugin, like you have to have the Century plugin, and good luck getting it to work between versions. You also have to depend on all the developers that make these sub plugins for citizens to keep them up to date. So that when citizens updates, your plugins all have to be up to date or they all break. So, what was I to do? I started researching uh, more into NPCs. And I found that if you have in single player mode, and it's it works in multiplayer, but they have another one out there. It's not a plugin, it's a mod. And it's called Custom NPCs. Custom NPCs does everything that Citizens does. But here's the neat thing. Instead of those little lines when you click on them with a book, you can click on them with anything in your hand other than things that modify them and they interact with you. You can set them where they have interaction lines, they have lines that they just say at random in the world. You can set them to converse to each other. And the really cool thing is all of the jobs, questing, banking, guards, healers, teleporters, all that stuff is in the mod. It does have some limitations, but Citizens 2 pales in comparison to this mod. Um, the big thing is you can build a skin library on all you know you can build a skin library and you can use those custom skins you can assign those skins to those uh, NPCs 
and they look exactly how you set them up to do. The rub is that everybody who has, who wants to see or use this, in order to use your server, they have to put the custom NPC uh, mod on their client. It's kind of like Mo Creatures. It works almost the same way. And I find that it's not a problem. And here it is. Here is why. I've had servers griefed. Uh, vanilla servers all the time you know what vanilla server hasn't been griefed and, and brought down uh, and bucket servers I've had to have a ton of anti-griefing plugins and I still do run them but then I thought you know if a person had to mod their server to get onto my server they had to go through the trouble of figuring out how to set forge up and how to set custom NPCs up and how to set the the mapper up you know, with custom NPCs being the main one that you have to have to get on, and you have to have our skin library to be able to see the the skins of the uh, NPCs. Otherwise, you get Purple Man. Yeah, for every one of them. If you have to go through all that trouble, you're going to put forth the work and the effort to get onto the server and use the server. I wouldn't say that you're not going to be likely, but a person who has to do all that is going to be less likely to have to grief it because they just expended a lot of resources just to be able to uh, get onto it. So, you know, the beauty of custom NPCs also was that you can still get on a standard bucket server, it's just the mod doesn't work. It turns itself off, and you can just use any other server you want. But for ours, you have to do that. The problem with it was vanilla Minecraft. Um, vanilla Minecraft, you can. There's a version you can you can forge vanilla Minecraft. You can install Forge, and you can make custom NPCs work on vanilla Minecraft. That works great. But unfortunately, there's not really much reliable grief prevention on vanilla Minecraft. That it's almost like they made forth an effort to make sure that people could get in and grief the server. Because, buddy, they do. So I needed the grief... <clears throat> Voice is cracking. I had to bend around over here and get that. I swear to... Um, so what I, had to, what I had to do, I needed the grief prevention aspect of it. It just, there's no question. I've had stuff really easily wrecked. Somebody comes in with a bunch of TNT and just destroys everything, you know? So World Guard was necessary along with a couple other plugins to keep everything protected. So it was out of the question running vanilla, though it runs beautifully on vanilla. If you have a club with three or four friends and you all have a whitelist going, then by all means, that <clears throat> that's the easiest way. Of course, with vanilla, it's kind of tough to get World Edit. They haven't ported World Edit over to uh, Forge yet. So enter... Cauldron. Uh, Cauldron used to go and still kind of does go by another name. It was called MCPC Plus. And they recently changed the name to, uh, to Cauldron. And they have a 172 revision 4 uh, version of their server running now. And the reason it's not higher up is because the modding community is having a lot of trouble with Mojang right now. I'll give you a little background on that in a, in a bit. But basically what Cauldron does, they have taken a spigot server and they have created a, well, I don't know that they did, the makers of Forge created a custom Forge wrapper for that server. So now you have a spigot server that can run all the plugins or most of them. There's some that don't work right. There's there's some reorganization that occurs with folders because of the way Forge handles things. Um, <clears throat> you can get your multiverse up and running. You can get your world edit, your world guard, protection stones, log blocks, all that stuff all works. Hawkeye, whatever you use. Um, even citizens will run on it. I'm not crazy about it, but I might go ahead and put it on there. Uh, in addition to uh, custom NPCs because we do have some Citizens 2 data attached to the map you know and we, we, we were running that plugin for a bit but it lets you run your mods uh, 
Citizens 2. There's some tweak mods you can get that reduce the lag, you know, that tweak the uh, settings of the server. Mainly I needed it for custom NPCs, so that's why I did it. So it's the best of both worlds. It's, it's the best of both worlds. Because you can just set your plugins up just like you would any bucket server. And you can pull your mods in there just like you would uh, any uh, Forge modded uh, vanilla server. <coughs> so awesome. Awesome setup. And I've been testing it. It had a, a few things that happened. Like for instance with Multiverse, your folder arrangement changes. Like uh, if you just drop Multiverse Core onto a Cauldron server and you try to import a world by dumping it into the server folder like you can with uh, Bucket uh, or Spigot, it's going to go, can't import, blah, 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 you know, and you get all these errors. <clears throat> what I found out you have to do with Multiverse is you have to put it in your plugins folder, run the server, whatever world you have is, is the world that your server loads, like that first world, it's going to create that as the default world. Stop your server. Now take your custom worlds and instead of dumping them in the server folder, whatever that world folder was that was your default world, the one that it just loaded, take it and, and drop your custom world into that folder. Um, like if your world was world 3. And then under that you have like, you have your dimensions like dim 1 and dim 2. Well, under world 3, in the world 3 folder, drop your custom world in there. Then start your server up, and then do the import command, and it will pull it in. What they've done is, for this particular variant of Minecraft server, um, custom worlds are nested they're nested below the default world. So whatever that default world was that it first pulled in, your custom worlds are now sub-dimensions of that world. They're right in there with dim, dim 1, dim 2, blah, 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 you know. And then you would have, like, such and such craft, or, or noob world, or cube world, or plot world, you know. And what it does is it loads it as a sub-dimension of that main world. And that's really, it's really a convoluted way to do it. But it's also a logical way to do it, if you think about it. It solves a number of problems. One of the problems it solves is you don't have this mess of all these different named worlds all in your server root folder, you know. This world, that world, the other, and you don't know which ones are imported and which ones are not. When it puts them under the subfolder, you know, when it puts them under that main world as, as subworlds, you know exactly what's loaded up. And the beauty of it is, if you want to move that over to another server, all you got to do is grab that one world folder, that, that folder that has all those subworlds in it, put it in a zip file, or just or don't zip it, just copy it all over onto your other server, you know, through a VNC program, or just drag and drop if you have the, uh, the drives networked, you know, sharing over a network, and uh, it's a, it's a one-step process. You don't have to copy this, and copy that, and pray to God you copy the right one, because it's all in there. It's all lumped into that. So that works good. The other thing it does, which works out really good, is if you have something like Voxel Map, which I use because nobody else is making many maps right now that are that are worth a crap. I mean, Ray's mini map was awesome, but Voxel Map beat him to the punch on 172 and I think 174. I, I don't know if he's got a mod out for 174 yet or not. But yeah, we're still running 172 and you can thank Mojang for that. Um, again, I'll tell you about that in a sec. But what it does, Voxel Map now sees all those custom worlds as subworlds, so it organizes your waypoints for you don't have this big honking pile of waypoints for like the six or seven worlds on your server that you have to turn some off and turn some on when you teleport you know or before now when you teleport it, it's automatic because it sees it as a subdimension kind of like the nether or the end or the noob world you know the one you imported or maybe the expert world 
So that works good. It keeps your waypoints in order. So I will say thank you, Cauldron, for enforcing that if you did. So that that's kind of fixed a lot of problems. Now here's why, if you guys have stuck with me through all of this babble, here is why you don't have many mods for 179 and 174 you have a few but you don't have a ton. The reason you don't is the head developer that was responsible for the Minecraft coder pack. The coder pack is basically what almost all of, of the uh, all of the really big modders use to uh, create their mods, to create their mods for Minecraft. It basically, the head developer was the guy who deobfuscated all of that code in Minecraft to where it made sense, to where people could actually write mods for Minecraft, since uh, Mojang seems to have a problem with this. Well, Mojang took a very decisive step, and, and this tells me that there are not friendly to open modders. They want you under their umbrella. And that's what this, this tells me. You know, it may not be the case, but this is what it's like. They bought up the guy. They brought him into the fold. They brought him into the fold of their group. And surprise, surprise, the Minecraft coder pack now eeps out at a crawl, or it doesn't eep out at all. Now, uh, how, how does that affect mods? The other way that affects mods is Forge uses the uh, MCP, uses that to get uh, get their API working, to get their mod loader working. Without the Minecraft coder pack, I don't know how many developers there are out there, how many modders there are. There's got to be at least a thousand or more. Those people have to cool their heels. They're left out in the dark unless they uh, learn to hard code everything. You know, get around using the API. On top of this, Minecraft has not, I mean, uh, Mojang has not, and I don't think they plan to anytime soon, they have not released their API, if there is, in fact, an API at all, really. There's probably some guy in a broom closet that's got some fancy label on it. it says developer for API on it you know and uh, he probably gets like ten dollars a month in uh, funding to develop this thing because how many years has it been now how hard is it to write a damn API I mean buckets doing it forge has been doing it for years mod loader you know all of these people they've, they've been writing API's and they've been doing it over and over again with each revision my uh, mojang Reobfuscates the code, and they have to rewrite the damn API, you know. So, uh, you know, I may be wrong about that, but I know with uh, with every revision of Minecraft that comes out, Forge has to be pretty much redone from the ground up, because the MCP has to be redone, you know, and blah da da blah da da blah da. -da. The fact is, Mojang should have been able to turn that out <clears throat> from day. One, because they wrote the software. They know the ins and outs. In fact, I would say that Mojang could probably build a better API than the people who are developing it now. But they don't want to. It's not that they can't. It's that they won't. And I didn't used to believe that until I see this, because by buying up the head developer that was uh, doing uh, Minecraft's coder pack... They essentially have hamstrung everybody. It alienated almost all of the modding community. So it's like I said, they want you in the fold, and it looks like they're taking a hostile view of people who write mods. So I can't wait to see what happens if they decide that they're going to leave the texture packers uh, out into the uh, out in the cold. You know, throw them to the wolves as well. But yeah, and that may not be the case, but I tell you right now, looking at it, when's the last time we had a good mini-map mod, or world downloader mod, or uh, any other kind of mod that was worth a crap other than X-Ray and, and maybe a couple others? When is the last time one was released? You know, that in itself, all I have to do is look at the writing on the wall. So, and, and it's really sad because without the mods, you know, vanilla Minecraft is nothing without the mods. 
Yeah, you see how hard it gets to play that game when you don't have the proper mods, like like the map mods and the other things. Plus, I like to have a mail system because other people get on there and I can leave them messages. I don't have to take that all out to the forums. There's mods that could do that up until about 174. You know, and, and stuff like that. Um, and there's a lot of people, I know a lot of people that have stopped playing. I know a lot of people that have stopped playing because without the mods, you know, I don't play this. What is this? This is, I'm in a block world with a stick in my hand. You know, what can I do with this? You know, without the mods, the game becomes so one-dimensional. So, yeah, and there were other really cool mods, like Custom NPCs was one, but there was another one called Minecraft Comes Alive. And that would that would also give very good artificially intelligent but randomly created NPCs. And, and it, <clears throat> it made it work almost like the Sims, man. You could even you could interact with them, you could buy and sell from them like you do with the other ones, but they had a bit more smarts up here. You could even build relationships with them and they were human looking. They weren't the I can't do it while holding this. The arm folded guy that does nothing but look at you and go, hmm. 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 You know. Oh, that's the other thing. The custom NPCs mod, you can assign sounds. You can load up AUG sounds for the interactions with them. You're not just stuck with hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And pretty much anything in that world that has to do with NPCs, you can associate a sound file with what they do. So you don't necessarily have to type dialogue for the dialogues. You can record augs of of their spoken words, so you can have voice actors, uh, and you can bring these NPCs alive and and make the world seem uh, it's like a more human place, you know. But that uh, that's my uh, that's my view of it, and uh, that's what I think of it. And and really, you guys ought to go out there, and you ought to check out uh, Cauldron. Just go on and say Cauldron. Let's see what is it. Uh, Easy way to get to it, just just put these keywords in, MCPC, and then space, and then Cauldron, and then Minecraft, and pre you know, on any Google. It should take you right to their site, or it should be one of the top links. I would post all this on here, I'd show you gameplay video, but YouTube has gotten really tight-assed about copyright stuff now, especially gaming video. And uh, the monetization that I have running on some of these is collecting up money so that I can uh, distribute computers to poor people. So uh, that stuff is not being pocketed. As, you know, as soon as that first payout comes, I'm going down to Goodwill Computer and I'm going to get parts and I'm going to augment my project, the one I talked about a while back. So, you know. And anyway, there you go. Long video. But in a nutshell, that's what I, that's, that's it. Just go down and try to, uh, Try to download that, install it, set it up, and enjoy. Enjoy the goodness that is cauldron.